So many gate modes. You've got edge, flank, J flank, peak, first peak. What do all of these mean and when are you going to use them? Coming up next. Depending on the flaw detector that you use, you're going to have a lot of different choices for gate triggering mode. Now, depending on which one you use, it will affect both the distance reading and the amplitude. Now, for this video, I'm only going to talk about how they affect distance reading. For amplitude, we could cover that in another video, but for here, we're just going to talk about distance effects. For the purposes of distance, edge, flank, and J flank are all the same thing. They take the distance at the point at which the leading edge of the waveform crosses the gate. Peak looks at the whole waveform within the gate and takes the distance reading to the point of maximum amplitude. First peak mode is fairly self-descriptive. If there are more than one peak that crosses the gate, it will simply look at the peak position of the first lobe. If you have a thickness gauge, you don't have any choice. You have to let it do what it wants to do. And what it usually wants to do is pick a zero crossing point from a negative to a positive lobe. Now that works really well in a lot of cases, but you really got to be careful and keep your eye on the A scan. But that's not really all that much different than what you do on a flaw detector. Using a two and a quarter and a five meg probe as examples, let's take a look at a couple of the problems that can happen depending on whether you use edge or peak mode. Number one is the trigger point or where the reading is taken. With edge, it will literally ride the slope of the waveform. Here I'm zoomed in on a waveform and I've got the two and a quarter meg transducer. You can see the effect as I lower the gate and the trigger point moves more to the left, reducing the thickness reading from 8.37 to 8.02 or about 0.35 millimeters. That's about 15 thou. It's not a lot, but it is something to take note of. Higher frequency probes it usually work better because your wavelength is shorter and your slope is steeper, which means less of a sound path difference from the top of the lobe to the bottom. I've got a five meg probe plugged in right now. Here it changes less than about 0.2 millimeters, which is about half what happened on the two and a quarter meg probe, which of course makes sense because the five meg probe is about double the frequency. Another thing that can go wrong is lobe flipping or lobe switching. Remember, an A scan in its natural state has negative and positive lobes. I'll do a video at another time about rectification, about half wave negative and half wave positive, etc. But suffice it to say, in order to get the most accurate and repeatable readings, you should be taking them on the same polarity lobe each and every time. But because we're usually using a fully rectified signal, we can't tell which one is which. It's very easy with just finger pressure or gain to literally just push an earlier lobe up, trip the gate and change your reading. On a two and a quarter meg transducer and the gate mode set to edge about halfway up the waveform, if we raise the gain, we can get a change of about half a millimeter or 20 thou. This difference in error when you switch lobes will change, of course, depending on the amplitude of the signal if you're using edge. In this case, I'm using the middle of each of those lobes as an example. To answer the question, which of the gate modes is best, it depends on really what you're doing. If you're doing shear wave weld inspection, it kind of doesn't really matter that much. The sound path distances are so long that if your trigger point slides up and down the waveform or you trip on the wrong lobe, the long robe, if you trip on the long robe, the wrong lobe, the difference that it makes on your reading will be kind of inconsequential. But for thickness testing, especially on thin stuff, it really is going to matter. Now looking at edge versus peak, while edge mode will run up and down the slope of the lobe and pick different points, peak will not. It simply grabs the point of maximum amplitude. Now this is amazing, except in the case where you have two peaks. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a mode you could use to just select the first peak? Yes, of course, there's a first peak mode and that's what we use it for. Here on the wave, I'll set the third reading on the top to gate one first peak sound path. And that way we can see all three at the same time. As I adjust the gain, the first peak is the most stable. No flipping between lobes like the peak mode just so long as you don't drop your gain or your signal doesn't drop so far that that first peak actually doesn't make it into the gate. To keep error to a minimum, I would use first peak. I usually have my machines always set on first peak, especially for high resolution thickness reading. If you have a thickness gauge, you don't have a choice. 
But in either case, keep an eye on the A scan on either instrument and make sure you can see where the reading is being picked up. Don't just look at the little digital box in the corner of your screen. You have to set your gate modes when you calibrate and then leave them there for the whole inspection. It becomes very difficult to change the rules halfway through the game. If you do this, set it up right in the beginning and then measure that way, you're gonna be a lot more accurate. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.